Hey there, voters. I'm Captain Stacey Hanrahan, and welcome to Wednesday's episode of The Voters TV. First up, our captain's captioned photo was provided by Marius Heinemann. We'll reveal the caption of the day at the end of the show. Coming up in Smooth Sailing, the Coast Guard Cutter Eagle explored in this week's Mad Mariner Report. Both the land lovers and experienced sailors will agree that the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Eagle is a stunning vessel. Mad Mariner's Captain Art Pine got the story behind the Eagle's graceful bowsprit and majestic sails. This classic square rigger is used as the Coast Guard's cadet training ship. One might wonder why they would use a tall ship to train officers when the rest of the fleet is engine propelled. Captain Chris Sinet, the Eagle's skipper, says they're not teaching cadets how to sail, they're teaching seamanship and leadership. With 22,000 square feet of sail and six miles of rigging, the Eagle requires a lot of teamwork and hands-on basic seamanship. Captain Sinet says learning ship handling aboard a sailing vessel rather than a power-driven ship gives cadets a better appreciation of the impact of waves, current, and sea state. The Eagle began her teaching career in 1936 as a training ship for Nazi German naval officers. After World War II, the U.S. took her as a war prize. Today, the Eagle has a permanent crew of six officers and 55 enlisted personnel that serve as instructors for up to 150 cadets at a time. She may be 72 years old, but the Eagle's pilot house boasts a state-of-the-art electronics package that includes radar, GPS receivers, and chart plotters. Between training cruises, the ship is open to visitors and always draws a crowd. To read much more on this three-masted bark, go to www.madmariner.com. Now in Did You Know, there are robotic sailboats? Never was I more aware of my own limited sailing knowledge than when I came across robotic sailors capable of crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Meet Pinta, a fully autonomous sailing boat. She will join seven other robotic craft this fall in a transatlantic race dubbed the Microtransit Challenge. Autonomous sailing boats have been designed by scientists around the world to make routing decisions, adapt to ever-changing wind conditions, and have perfect timing during tack and jibe. It will take an estimated three months for these unmanned boats to cross the Atlantic Ocean from Portugal to the Caribbean. Most are between two and four meters and use solar panels to power robotic operations. The race will test the endurance and reliability of robotic vessels. If the boats are successful, environmental monitoring of the world's oceans will become cheaper and easier. A robotic sailboat would be able to take on more dangerous conditions than a manned research vessel. Smaller scale races are taking place before the transatlantic one this autumn. In fact, the World Robotics Sailing Championship is taking place this week in Austria. To learn more about these autonomous sailboats, go to www.microtransit.org. Next up, let's see what's splashing around in nautical news. National Liquidators, a Florida-based boat liquidation company, is reporting a 47% increase in boat repossessions in the Midwest from 2006 to 2007. The company expects those numbers to keep rising. It should come as no surprise that boat repos have increased significantly in areas with an increase in home foreclosures. A National Liquidator spokesperson specifically cited the suburbs of Detroit, Cleveland, St. Louis, and Minneapolis. More salmon fishing bans have been approved in California. The California Fish and Game Commission voted to ban almost all recreational fishing of salmon in the state's rivers to protect declining Chinook stocks. Salmon fishing will be limited to a small stretch of the Sacramento River with only one salmon per day allowed in November and December. 
In April, the federal government banned both recreational and commercial salmon fishing off the coast of California and most of Oregon. The coastal ban in California is already expected to cause 2,000 lost jobs. And finally, a 144-foot snake boat will enter the Guinness Book of World Records for accommodating the largest canoe crew. The boat, designed by Ares Marine, was crewed by 141 rowers earlier this month on a lake in southwestern India. Snake boats are popular in the Kerala Indian culture, and their annual boat race is a major tourist attraction. Now it's time to reveal Stacy's TheVoters.com celebrity profile pick of the day, which is Captain William Hay and his 40-foot folk sailboat, Jiri. William has quite an accomplished profile. He not only has extensive nautical training, but is a physician, psychiatrist, and wilderness medicine specialist. William has sailed solo from Vancouver to San Francisco to Hawaii. Welcome to the boaters and congrats on your celebrity status. And finally today, the captain's caption of the day is, now in financial news, after years of spending billions investing in the electronics industry, Garmin today returned to the weather vane as its <laughs> chief source for directional information. Submitted by Captain Rob. And that'll do it for this episode of The Voters TV. See you back here on Friday.